Hi, this video is going to cover rearranging formulas. So the learning goals for this video are to solve for any variable in a formula or equation and also to rearrange formulas with and without substitution. So basically uh, one of the goals is to change a formula, let's say, for this as a cone, from V equals to R equals. So we want to make the radius explicit in the formula. Okay, so that's one of the things that hopefully by the end of the video you can do. So um, before um, we used formulas for volume just to find volume, but for this question now, let's say if a cone has a volume of 800 cubic centimeters, so you already know the volume, and a radius of 10 centimeters, determine the height of the cone to one decimal place. So we're going to use the formula for the volume of a cone, but we're going to be using it a little bit differently. We're, going, we're still going to substitute all the variables for the values that are given, but we're going to have to isolate using um, a balanced approach. So V here, the volume of this cone is 800. So I can actually replace V here with 800. Equals pi is just pi. The radius is given to me as 10 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to write 10 squared. I don't know what the height is, so I'm going to leave it as H and then divide by 3. So you see how this is different. I need to get h by itself. I need to isolate it. Well, one thing we can do is we can actually figure out what is pi times 10 squared divided by 3. We can simplify that expression. And the way we do that is grab a calculator. So let's figure out what that is. So that's pi times 10 squared divided by 3. It's 104.72. Okay, so all of that turns into 104.72 and we still have h there. So this just becomes a very simple one-step equation. I need to isolate h. This 104.72 is multiplying with that so I'm going to divide it out. 104.72 and whatever I do on this side of the equation I have to do the same thing on the other side. These values will divide out so on the right here, I'm left with H, and on the left, I have that, whatever that is. So 800 divided by 104.72, and I get 7.6 okay, to one decimal place. So the height here is 7.6 uh, centimeters. So this is an example of uh, using a formula okay, and then having to isolate for a variable. Let's just do another example. So let's say a cone, again, has a volume now of 1,200 cubic centimeters and a height of 20 centimeters. Determine the radius. Okay, so we've used this formula now to find the height. We're going to use it to find the radius. Um, the volume is given to me as 1,200. So I can replace V with 1,200 equals uh, pi is pi. I don't know what the radius is, so I have to leave it as R. So that's r squared, and then the height is 20. So I'm going to substitute h with 20, and then divide by 3. So now um, you notice that um, these uh, ex these factors are all multiplying together. So uh, remember, bed masses doesn't really matter what order I do multiplying or dividing with. So I'm I can actually skip over the r squared. So I'm going to do what uh, pi times 20 divided by 3. I can figure out what that expression is and simplify that. So let's go with pi times 20 divided by 3, and that becomes 20.94. Okay, so that expression, okay, uh, well, that's 1200 is equal to 20.94, and then I have r squared. That's 20.94, right? Yeah. Now, this just becomes, again, um, a simple equation. I have 20.94 is multiplying with the r squared. So I'm going to divide this side by 20.94, which means I then have to divide the left side. So the, the 20.94s will divide out. So I have r squared is equal to whatever that is, 1,200 divided by 20.94 which is 57.31. Now, this says r squared is 57.31, but I only want r. 
right? So I need to get rid of that square somehow. So I have to do the opposite of squaring, which is the square root. So r is equal to, and then whatever that number is, I just take the square root, 7.6. Again, what do you know? So the radius in this example is 7.6 centimeters. So we substituted, we simplified here to get a value, divided it out, and then this is a little bit different from before. You have to take a square root because the expression um, r is squared. All right, um, let's just pretend we don't have any numbers. We can rearrange these formulas and so that instead of having v equals, it's going to say h equals. Okay? And this is how we do it. So we're just going to isolate h. Um, on this side. Notice that this part, there's a fraction that's being divided by 3, so I hate fractions, so I'm going to get rid of it by multiplication. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Okay. The 3's will divide out, so on the left we have 3v is equal to, and I'm left here with pi r squared h. Now, pi r squared here is multiplying with h. So to get rid of the pi r squared, I'm going to divide by pi r squared. But then I have to do it on the other side as well. So the pi r squareds will divide out. So really, I'm just left with h here, and I write out what I have on this side. 3v over pi r squared. So this is exactly the same formula as what we started with, except that h is all by itself instead of v. Now let's try the same thing with the radius. Um, so I want to isolate r. Um, I notice that I have a denominator of 3, so again, I hate fractions. So I'm going to multiply to get rid of them. All right. So I have uh, 3v is equal to pi r squared h, just like what we had there. Except here, r squared is being multiplied by both pi and h. So to get rid of the pi and the h, I'm going to divide by pi and h. But if I divide it pi and h there, I'm going to divide by pi and h on the left side. So pi and pi will divide out, the h and the h will divide out, so I'm left with r squared on the right here. And the left, I have 3v divided by pi h. Now again, r is being squared here, so I have to take the square root to get rid of the square. So I'm left with r is equal to, and then I just write down what's on the side here, 3v divided by pi h. Doesn't that look impressive? So in order to isolate for whatever variable I want, I am using the balanced approach. Right? Whatever I'm doing to one side of the equation, I do it on the exact same, on the other side exactly the same. Okay? So Let's look at the success criteria. So you will be successful if, okay, well, let's say I. I can substitute all of the given information into the unknowns. I can simplify and use the balanced method of solving equations to solve for the missing variable. And also rearrange formulas to isolate any variable by using the balanced method. Okay, so if you can do all three of those things, then you're a champ. Let's give one a shot. This question here, the volume of a square-based pyramid is 900 cubic centimeters. If the height of the pyramid is 20 meters, calculate the side length of the pyramid's base. If you need a formula sheet, feel free to use those links. Um, pause the video, give the question a try, and when you're ready to see a solution, you may press play. So good luck. Okay. Let's start with the formula for the volume of a square-based pyramid. It is V equals B squared H divided by 3. Let's replace the variables with the values that are given. So the volume is 900. So V is now 900 is equal to B. I don't know what the side length is. I know the height is 20, so I'm going to replace H with 20 and then divide by 3. Okay. One thing we can do is we can do 20 divided by 3. Um, to simplify that expression. So let's do 20 over 3, and we get a bunch of 6s. So 6 point, let's get some 6s in there. So 6.6667, six, six, why not? The more the merrier. B squared, right? Is equal to 900 over here. Now I want to get rid of this 6.6667. Six, 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 That's multiplying with B squared, so I'm going to divide it out. 6.6667. Six, 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 
So that means I have to divide the other side. So those will divide out. So I have b squared remaining here. So b squared is, and I divide that on my calculator. So 900 divided by 6.6667. That's pretty close to 135. So let's write 135. Now b is being squared, so that means I got to take the square root. So let's take the square root of 135, 11.6. Okay, so b is equal to 11.6 meters. Okay. All right, let's now work on rearranging a formula. So we're going to rearrange this formula of a square-based pyramid such that the side length of the base is isolated. So I want to have B isolated. Okay, That's what you're going to try to do. So again, use the balanced approach. Uh, pause the video, give the question a try, and when you want to check how you did, just press play. Okay, so good luck. All right, let's um, try to isolate B squared here. So I have a denominator of 3. I hate that, so I'm going to multiply to get rid of it. Okay. So the threes will divide out on the right. So on the left here, I have 3v is equal to b squared h. Because I want to get, I want to just isolate b, and this h is multiplying, so I'm going to divide both sides by h. So the h's will divide out. You're left on the right here with b squared. On the left, you have 3v over h. Almost done. This b is being squared, so I want to take the square root to isolate it. So b is equal to the square root of 3 times v over h. Okay. So just to wrap things up, okay, you can actually rearrange a formula and then use it to calculate the value of an isolated variable. So for instance, we go back here. If we wanted to find out what the... Um, base uh, length is of a pyramid uh, but we know the volume and the height we can actually use this formula okay so you can rearrange the formula first and then use the um, uh, the new formula to come up with your um, answer okay or you can substitute uh, in the beginning it doesn't really matter okay and finally formulas are simply equations so treat them as such make sure that when you're working with them you have to use the balanced approach so I hope that this uh, video has made uh, rearranging formulas clear, so best of luck.